Welcome back to Goosebumps Attack of the Jack-O-Lanterns, part three. We stepped up onto the front stoop and peered through the glass storm door. A big orange cat with bright blue eyes stared back at us from the other side of the door. I rang the doorbell. A few seconds later, a smiling woman in jeans and a yellow turtleneck came hurrying to the door. She carried a basket of Snickers bars and Milky Ways. You all look great, she declared, dropping a candy bar in each bag. Drew, hold up your bag, Tabby ordered shrilly. Oh, sorry. I was still worrying about Shane and Shauna. I held up my bag for the woman. The cat narrowed its amazing blue eyes at me. Are you supposed to be a princess? The woman asked Tabby. No, a ballerina, Tabby replied. And you are a lump of coal, the woman asked Walker. Something like that, Walker muttered. He didn't do his dark and stormy night routine. I guess he was worried about Shane and Shauna too. Have fun, the woman said. She pulled the storm door shut. The four of us jumped off our stoop and started across the frost-covered grass to the next yard. When I glanced back to the door, I saw the cat still staring out at us. The next house was dark, so we crossed the lawn to the house next door to it. A group of kids was already in the front stoop, shouting, Trick or treat! Trick or treat! Where are they? I whispered to Walker. He shrugged. If they don't show up, I started, but I saw Tabby watching me, so I didn't finish my sentence. We waited for the kids to leave, then climbed up to the stoop. Two little kids, probably three or four years old, were handing out little bags of candy corn to everyone. They laughed at Lee's bee costume. They wanted to feel the antennas. The little boy asked Lee where his stinger was. I stuck it in someone, Lee told him. They stared hard at Walker's all-black outfit. I think it kind of frightened them. Are you supposed to be a monster? The little girl asked Walker timidly. No, I'm a lump of coal, Walker told her. She nodded seriously. We hurried away and did three more houses to the end of the block. I saw two kids that I babysit for. They were in matching robot costumes. I stopped to talk to them for a minute. Then I had to run to catch up to the others. They'd crossed the street and had started doing the houses on the other side. A strong gust of wind fluttered my cape. I shivered and glanced nervously at my watch again. Where were they? Where were Shane and Shauna? The whole plan depended on them. Wow, pretty good haul so far, Lee declared. He held his bag open, studying the contents as we crossed the street. Did you get any Kit Kats? Tabby demanded. I'll trade anyone for Kit Kats. Only one person gave out apples, Lee said, making a disgusted face. He reached into his bag and pulled out the apple. Then he heaved it as hard as he could across the yard. The apple hit a tree trunk with a loud thunk. Then it bounced into the driveway. Why do people give out apples? Lee grumbled. Don't they know we only want candy? Some people are just cheap, Tabby said. She pulled out her apple and dropped it in the grass. And she kicked it with a toe of her ballet slipper. Apples are not cheap. These kids are nuts. Anyway, back to reading. Sorry. Introduction. <laughs> they both really deserve what they're going to get, I thought. They're both really jerks. But where are Shane and Shauna? We trick-or-treated our way down the block. It was getting pretty late, and there were fewer little kids out. The street light near the corner was broken. We stepped into a patch of deep shadow. One of Lee's antennas kept slipping off, and he slid it back into place for the tenth time. As we neared the corner, a tall tree blocked the moonlight, and it grew even darker. Oh! I let out a cry as two figures leaped out at us from behind the tree. I thought that Joe and Todd had returned, but I quickly saw that it wasn't those guys. In a gray blur, two figures turned their backs on us, blocking our way. They wore dark robes that flowed straight down to the ground, and over their heads... Over their heads? They wore pumpkins. Large, round pumpkins, perfectly balanced on their shoulders. Whoa! Walker let out a startled cry. He backed up and stumbled into me. Tabby and Lee gaped in surprise, but the most horrifying surprise was yet to come. As they slowly turned to face us, their jack-o'-lantern faces came into view. Eerie, jagged grins cut into their pumpkin heads. Flashing triangle eyes lit by flames. Bright orange-yellow flames danced inside their heads. And as the pumpkin heads turned their fiery, ragged grins on us, Walker and I opened our mouths and screamed in terror. Our screams echoed down the block. The fire flashed in the pumpkin head's eyes. I turned to Tabby and Lee. The light from the fiery jack-o'-lantern faces flickered over their faces. They stood calmly, staring at the grinning pumpkin heads. Tabby turned to me. Is this your idea of a joke? Were you trying to scare us? We know it's Shane and Shauna, Lee said. He tugged at one of the dark, loose, flowing costumes. Hey, Shane, how's it going? The two pumpkin heads remained silent. How'd you get the fire to work? Do you have candles in there? Tabby demanded. How can you see? The pumpkin heads grinned back in silence. A lick of fire darted out from one of the jagged mouths. I shivered. These costumes were too good. 
I could hear the flames hiss inside the big orange heads. The costumes were dark green like pumpkin vines. Why aren't Tabby and Lee frightened, I wondered. I expected Shane and Shauna to appear in something frightening, but I didn't expect anything as good as these fiery jack-o'-lantern heads. The costumes were great, but I felt so disappointed. Tabby and Lee were definitely not frightened. This Halloween is going to be a disaster like the others, I thought. I stepped up beside Walker. I couldn't see his expression under all the black makeup. How do they do the fire? He whispered. It's really awesome. I nodded, but it didn't scare Tabby and Lee, I whispered back. It's early, Walker whispered. Shane and Shauna had just started. My cape had become tangled around my legs. I tugged it free and tossed it behind me. The two pumpkin heads still hadn't said a word. Tabby picked up her trick-or-treat bag and turned to me. You'll have to do better than this if you want to scare Lee and me, she said with a sneer. We're not scaredy cats like you two, Lee boasted. Flames darted out of the pumpkin head's eyes. They both tilted their big heads as they stared at Tabby and Lee. How do they do that? I wondered. How do they control the flames? They have some kind of remote control? Well, are we going to stand here and freeze or are we going trick-or-treating? Tabby demanded. Let's do your block, I suggested to her. Tabby started to reply, but a hiss of fire from the nearest pumpkin head made her stop. Let's go somewhere else, the jack-o'-lantern said from somewhere inside the pumpkin head. His voice came out in a hoarse crackle, too harsh to be a whisper, a dry, choked sound. Somewhere else, his partner echoed. Her voice also came out in a hoarse crackle, like dry, dead leaves being crinkled together. Excuse me? Lee cried. We know a better neighborhood. The first pumpkin head crackled. The jagged mouth cut through the thick pumpkin flesh didn't move. The voice hissed from inside. The orange and yellow flames tossed in rhythm to the words. We know a better neighborhood. A neighborhood you won't forget. Tabby laughed. She rolled her eyes. Oh, wow, scary voices, she said sarcastically. Oh, I'm shaking, I'm shaking. Lee teased. He and Tabby laughed together. Give us a break, guys, Tabby said to the pumpkin heads. Your costumes are pretty good, but they didn't scare us, so lose the creepy voices, okay? Yeah, Lee agreed. Let's go do some houses. It's getting late. Follow us. One of the pumpkin heads hissed. Follow us to a new neighborhood. A better neighborhood. They led the way down the street. Their big heads bounced on their shoulders as they walked. The fire flickered from their heads, casting a glow like lighted torches. What are they doing? Walker whispered in my ear. This isn't in the plan. Where are they taking us? I didn't know. We walked three blocks heading away from our houses. We passed a row of big stone houses set back on wide lawns behind tall hedges. The next block had an empty lot where someone had started to build a house and then stopped. The two pumpkin heads walked quickly, taking long strides. Their heads bounced on their shoulders. They kept their fiery faces straight ahead and didn't glance back at us. Where are we going? Lee demanded, jogging to catch up to them. He tugged at one of their shoulders. You're passing a lot of good houses across the street. The jack-o'-lantern creature didn't slow down. Let's try a new neighborhood, he crackled. Yes, his partner hissed. A new neighborhood, a better neighborhood. You'll see. They led us past the empty lot, past a row of dark small houses. Where are we going, Walker whispered. He mentioned to Shane and Shauna. What is their problem? Why are they doing this? They're starting to scare me. I'm sure they know what they're doing, I whispered back. I gazed around the block. I didn't see many other trick-or-treaters. It was getting late, and most of the little kids had already gone home. In the next driveway, two tall kids, a gorilla and a chubby clown, were pawing through their trick-or-treat bags. They had their heads lowered to the bags. We passed by them, and they didn't even look up. Hey, we're missing a lot of good houses, Lee protested. He pointed to a brick house on the corner. Can we stop there? Those people always hand out handfuls of candy bars. Really? Handfuls? The pumpkin heads ignored him and kept walking. Hey, whoa, stop, Tabby demanded. She and Lee both trotted up in front of the pumpkin heads. Stop, come on, whoa. A new neighborhood, one of them croaked. Let's try a new neighborhood. The other one echoed. A better neighborhood. A chill ran down my back. Shane and Shauna were acting so weird. I tugged my cape off a clump of weeds. The air suddenly felt colder and damp. I wrapped the cape around me. Up ahead, Lee fiddled with his bee antenna. I saw that Tabby's ballet slippers were soaked with mud. We followed the pumpkin heads across the street, and they stepped up the sidewalk and started into the dark woods. 
Walker hurried up beside me. Even through his heavy makeup, I could see the worried expression on his face. Why are they taking us into the woods? He whispered. I shrugged. I guess they're getting ready to scare Tabby and Lee? Twigs and dead leaves crackled under our shoes as we made our way between the trees. A frightening thought flashed into my mind. I suddenly pictured the four fat people who had disappeared. Four people, vanished into thin air, never seen again. I remembered all of my mother's warnings. I remembered how she told us to stay where there were a lot of kids and a lot of bright lights. I remembered how she didn't even want me to go trick-or-treating tonight. This is wrong, I realized. Mom's advice was smart. We shouldn't be walking through the woods tonight, I knew. We shouldn't be away from the street, away from the brightly lit houses. We shouldn't go off by ourselves like this in the dark, creepy woods. A new neighborhood. A pumpkin head crackled from just up ahead. Just past these woods. The other whispered. A really good neighborhood. You'll see. The light from inside their heads flickered over the dark tangles of bare trees and tall weeds. My heart began to thud. I hurried to keep up with the others. Shane and Shauna are good friends, I told myself. I'm sure they know what they're doing. But this wasn't what we planned. This wasn't what we planned at all. Why do I have such a bad feeling about this? Shane, Shauna, give us a break, Tabby complained shrilly. Look at me. Look at my ballerina skirt. She held up the front of her skirt. Even in the dim light, I could see the mud stain on the front. We have to get out of these woods, Tabby wailed angrily. Yeah, it's too dark and we're wasting too much time, Lee agreed. His trick-or-treat bag got caught on a low tree limb. He tugged it hard to pull it loose. Shane and Shauna ignored the complaints. The big, fiery pumpkins bouncing on their shoulders, they made their way steadily and quickly through the darkness of the woods. A few minutes later, we stepped out onto a narrow street. Seeing the bright street lights and rows of little houses, we all let out a happy cheer. Now we can trick-or-treat, one of the pumpkin heads croaked. I turned my eyes up and down the street. I saw house after house, all small, all on tiny lawns. Most of them had lights on their front. Many of them were decorated for Halloween. The houses stretched for blocks, two rows of brightly lit little houses, as far as I could see. This is an awesome neighborhood for trick-or-treating, I declared, starting to feel a lot better, a lot less frightened. Excellently agreed. We'll clean up here. Where are we? Walker demanded. How come I've never seen this neighborhood before? No one answered him. We were all too eager to get started. I pulled some wet leaves off my cape and straightened my mask. Tromping through the woods had messed all of us up. We took a few seconds to get our costumes in better shape. When the six of us hurried up to the first house, a young woman carrying a baby in one arm came to the door. She dropped miniature candy bars into our bags. The baby stared at the flaming pumpkin head and smiled. At the next house, an elderly couple took forever getting to the door. Trick or treat, we shouted at the top of our lungs. They raised their hands to their ears. I guess they couldn't stand the noise. I'm sorry, but we don't have any candy, the old woman said. She dropped nickels into our bags, a nickel per bag. We hurried across the small yard to the next house. Two girls, about seven or eight, greeted us at the door. Awesome costumes, one of them said to Shane and Shauna. They gave us little bags of M&Ms. This is cool, Lee declared as we hurried to the next house. The houses are so close together, Tabby added. We can do a hundred houses in no time. Why didn't we ever come here before, Walker asked. Trick or treat, we screamed as we rang the doorbell in the next house. A teenaged boy with long blonde hair and an earring in one ear answered the door. He snickered at our costumes. Cool. He muttered, then he dropped bags of candy corn into our bags. On to the next house, and the next, and the next, and the next. We did the next block, stopping at every house. Then we covered two more blocks. The little houses seemed to stretch on forever. My trick-or-treat bag was nearly full. We stopped at the corner because Walker's shoe had come untied. While he bent down to tie it, we all stopped to catch our breath. Hurry up! A pumpkin urged Walker. Flames leaked angrily from his eyeballs. Everyone hissed. No time to waste. Give me a break, Walker murmured. I have a knot. As he struggled with his shoe, the two pumpkin heads bobbed and squirmed impatiently. Finally, Walker climbed to his feet and picked up his bulging trick-or-treat bag. The pumpkin heads were already leading the way to the next block of houses. I'm getting a little tired, I heard Lee whisper to Tabby. What time? My bag is nearly full, Tabby replied. With a groan, she shifted the heavy bag to her other hand. Hurry, a pumpkin head insisted. Lots more houses to do. Lots. The other one hissed. We did two more blocks, both sides of the street, about twenty houses. 
The bag was filled to the top. I had to carry it in both hands. Walker's shoelace had come undone again. When he bent to tie it, it ripped in his hand. Now what am I gonna do? He muttered. Hurry, the pumpkin head insisted. Four houses. I'm getting tired, Tabby complained, loud enough for everyone to hear this time. Me too, Lee agreed, and this trick-or-treat bag is getting heavy. Stupid shoelace, Walker muttered, still bent over his shoe. I guess it is getting pretty late, I said, gazing around. I don't see any other trick-or-treaters. I think they've all gone home. I pulled off my cape. It was all tangled, and it was starting to choke me. I balled it up and tucked it under my arm. More houses, one of the pumpkin heads whispered. Hurry, lots more to do, the other one insisted in her dry, cracking voice. The yellow flames danced inside her head. But we want to quit, Lee whined. Yes, we're done, Tabby agreed shrilly. You can't quit, the pumpkin head snapped. Huh? Lee's mouth dropped open. Keep going. You can't quit, the pumpkin head insisted. They both appeared to float up, to rise over us. The fires raged in their triangle eyes. The heads floated up over the dark, caped bodies. You can't quit. You can't ever quit. Ha ha, very funny, Tabby rolled her eyes, but I saw Lee step back in fear. His knees seemed to buckle, and he nearly dropped his trick-or-treat bag. Another block, a pumpkin head insisted. Another block, and then another. Whoa, wait a minute, Tabby protested. You can't boss us around like this. I'm going home. She turned and started to walk away, but the two pumpkin heads moved quickly to block her path. Let me go, Tabby protested. She darted sharply to the right, but the big pumpkin creatures floated with her. Their fiery grins appeared to grow wider, brighter. The two of them began circling us, floating silently. They swirled around us faster and faster until it looked as if we were surrounded by flames. A wall of leaping flames all around us. You will obey, came the crackling command. The flames pushed us from behind, forced us forward. We had no choice but to obey them. We were prisoners, prisoners of their fire. An old man was standing at the door of the first house. He grinned at us as we stepped onto the front stoop. You kids are out kind of late, aren't you? He asked. Kind of, I replied. He dropped packages of chuckles into our bags. Hurry, a pumpkin head urged as we crossed the wet grass to the next house. Hurry. Lee's trick-or-treat bag was so heavy he dragged it along the ground. I carried mine in both hands. Tabby complained to herself, muttering and shaking her head. We did both sides of the block. I didn't see any other kids out. No cars came by. Some of the houses were turning out their lights. The pumpkin head insisted. Lots more houses. Lots more blocks. No way, Lee cried. No way, Tabby repeated. She tried to sound strong, but I heard a tremble in her voice. The jack-o'-lantern faces leaned over us once again. Their fiery eyes stared out at us. Hurry, you can't stop now. You can't. But it's too late, I protested, and my shoe keeps coming off, Walker chimed in. You don't want to trick-or-treat anymore, Tabby told them shrilly. You can't stop. No way, Tabby and Lee repeated together. They started to chant, No way, no way, no way. Our bags are full, I said. Mine is starting to tear, Walker complained. No way, no way, Tabby and Lee chanted. The two jack-o'-lanterns began to swirl around us again, circling faster and faster, building the wall of flames. You must not stop, one of them hissed. They swirled closer, so close I could feel the scorching heat of their flames, and as they swirled, they began to hiss like snakes about to strike. The hissing grew louder, 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 until it sounded as if we were surrounded by snakes. My heavy trick-or-treat bag fell from my hands. Stop! I screamed at them. Stop it! You're not Shane and Shauna. Fire leaped from their eyes. Their hisses became a high wail. You're not Shane and Shauna, I shrieked. Who are you? They swirled to a stop. Bright flames licked out of their grinning mouths. Their shrill wails bounced off the bare trees, cutting through the heavy night silence. Who are you? I demanded again, my voice trembling. My whole body shook. I suddenly felt as if the cold of the night had seeped inside me. Who are you? Have you done something to our friends? No reply. I turned to Walker. The light of the flames flickered over his face. Through his black makeup, I could see his frightened expression. I swallowed hard and turned to Tabby and Lee. They were both sneering and shaking their heads. 
Is this your idea of a dumb Halloween joke? Tabby demanded. She rolled her eyes. Wow, did you really think Lee and I would fall for this? Oh, I'm scared, I'm scared. Lee cried sarcastically. He made his knees knock together. Look, I'm shaking like a leaf. He and Tabby let out loud laughs. These are real clever costumes, great fire effects, but we know it's Shane and Shauna, Lee declared. No way you're gonna scare us, Drew. No way, Tabby repeated. Look, she and Lee reached out their hands. They each grabbed a pumpkin head and tugged. Whoa. They pulled the fiery pumpkin heads off the creature's shoulders, and then all four of us screamed because the two costume figures had no heads underneath. Our screams rose up shrilly, cutting through the night air like wailing sirens. The pumpkin head fell from Tabby's hand and bounced heavily to the ground. Bright orange flames shot out of its eyes and mouth. Lee still gripped the other pumpkin head between his hands, but he dropped it when the jagged mouth began to move. The fiery heads grinned up at us from the grass. Ah. I uttered a low moan of terror as I staggered back. I wanted to run away, to run as fast as I could and not look back. But I couldn't take my eyes off the two heads, grinning up at us from the wet grass. As I stared, my heart pounded and my legs began to shake. Someone grabbed my arm. Walker. He held on to me. His hand was cold as ice. With his other hand, he pointed to the two headless bodies. They stood in their dark, flowing costumes. They hadn't moved. The spot between their shoulders where their heads had rested was flat and smooth, as if the pumpkin heads had been balanced there, but never attached. Never attached. Tabby and Lee huddled together beside me. Tabby's tiara was missing. Her hair had come unpinned. It fell in wet tangles over her face. Lee's trick-or-treat bag had toppled onto its side. A pile of candy spilled over the grass, inches away from one of the pumpkin heads. The flames inside the heads danced and flickered, and then the jagged mouths began to move. The smiles grew wider. The triangle eyes narrowed. <laughs> An ugly laugh escaped their mouths. An evil, dry sound, more like a throat clearing, more like a cough than a laugh. <laughs> no, I moaned. Beside me, I heard Walker gasp. Lee swallowed hard. Tabby was holding onto the sleeve of his bee costume with both hands. She pulled him back until they were standing behind Walker and me. He he he. The heads laughed together, flames flickering inside them. Their two bodies moved quickly. They reached out long arms and grabbed the heads from the grass. I, s I expected them to place the heads back on their shoulders, but they didn't. They held the heads in front of their chests. He 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 he. Another dry laugh. The pumpkin mouths twisted on the dark round faces. The eyes stared blankly at us, bright orange, then shadowy, flickering with the flames. I realized I was squeezing Walker's arm. He didn't even seem to notice. I let go and took a deep breath. Who are you? I called to the two creatures. My voice came out high and tiny. Who are you and what do you want? <laughs> they laughed their ugly laughs again. Who are you? I choked out again, shouting over their dry, crackling laughter. Where are Shane and Shauna? Where are our friends? Flames hissed from the two heads. Their ragged orange grins grew wider. Drew, let's try one more time to run away, Walker whispered. Maybe if we catch them by surprise. We both spun and started to run. Tabby and Lee came stumbling after us. My legs felt so wobbly and weak, I didn't think I could run. My heart pounded so hard, I struggled to breathe. Run, Walker cried breathlessly, pulling my arm. Drew, faster. We didn't get far. Uttering their shrill, frightening hisses, the creatures whirled around us once again, trapping us, holding us prisoner inside their circle of flames. No way we could run away. No way we could escape from them. Peering over the flying flames, I searched desperately up and down the street. No one in sight. Nothing moved. No cars, no people, not even a cat or a dog. Holding their heads up at their waists, the two creatures stepped up to us. They stood over us menacingly, raising the red, glowing heads high above their bare shoulders. jack-o'-lantern lips pushed out the words. The red eyes stared down at us. More houses. More houses. You cannot stop. You must keep on trick-or-treating. Pick up your bags. Pick them up. Now. One of them growled. Her head held up between two hands. She gazed down at us, her jagged lips forming an evil sneer. We, we don't want to trick-or-treat, Lee wailed, holding on to Tabby. We want to go home, Tabby cried. The pumpkin heads continued their hissing chant. They bumped us together. They bumped and pushed us. We had no choice. Wearily, we picked up our trick-or-treat bags from where they had fallen on the grass. 
They moved behind us, chanting, chanting in their low, dry whispers. More houses. More houses. They pushed us to the first house on the block. They pushed us onto the front stoop. Then they hovered close behind. How, how long do we have to trick or treat? Tubby demanded. The pumpkin heads grinned together. Forever, they declared. 